I am joined by Democrat Jim Massey, an active volunteer, and also current Republican representative covering Cumberland County, Greg Rothman. The rules that we have today, we have three issues. Each of you will get to respond and offer a rebuttal to your opponent's response. Responses will be limited to 45 seconds, rebuttals 30 seconds. To determine who answers first, we are using alphabetical order of your last names for the first two questions and a pre-debate coin flip for the third. So our first issue today, marijuana legalization. Other states have already legalized recreational marijuana. Is this something that Pennsylvania should do? And Mr. Massey, we'll begin with you. I believe marijuana should be legalized after the fact that after Fetterman did a great tour of the state, most people seem to be in favor of it. I have personal experience with my wife really bad off from cancer and using marijuana to help with pain and other issues. And it should be easy for people to be able to use marijuana in those cases. I do believe that we have to have some structure. If we do make it uh, legal, that we tax it in certain ways and use that money possibly for education and also to take care of people who start to have a problem with it. And we have to be prepared that people need to understand that you could get a DUI if you're out using it after taking a dose of marijuana. Mr. Rothman, same question. Yeah, I, I don't support legalizing recreational marijuana. I, I did vote for medical marijuana, which uh, uh, obviously helped Jim's wife and has helped lots of veterans with PTSD and uh, children with seizures and cancer patients. Um, but I don't think we're ready to go to full recreational yet. Um, and it is not difficult to get a medical marijuana card either, um, but I'm also concerned, I recently read a study about um, adolescents and while your brain is still forming until you're 25 or 26 years old and the, the dangers of marijuana. So I don't think we know enough. Um, I did try to amend the uh, medical marijuana bill to tax it, and I was told we couldn't tax it because it was medicine, to which I responded, well, we're, we're the reason, we're calling it medicine, so, um, but I'm not ready to go recreational yet. And 30 seconds too, if you would like them. I appreciate Greg's work on getting medical marijuana for cancer patients and other people and veterans being retired in the military myself, as well as Greg was in the military. Now, it's very important to be able to use it that way. I don't really think it's a good thing off the bat to have everybody using it and then getting on the roads and so forth. And that's where we've got to figure out ways to make it work. Representative Rothman. Yeah, I just wanted to add that um, 100,000 people have died in America due to fentanyl overdose, and, and they're putting fentanyl in the marijuana, and uh, that's more than we're nearly as many as died in, in you know, the entire Vietnam War, Tw twice as many as yeah. died in the Vietnam War. So we do need to do something about illicit drugs and stop the drugs from coming through the border, especially fentanyl. All right, our second issue today. Pennsylvania's gas tax is one of the highest in the nation. It is around 60 cents a gallon. Is that too high? And what is the best way to fund bridge and road repairs and also the state police? Representative Rothman. Yeah, it, it's the second highest. I think only California is higher. Um, I introduced co-sponsored legislation to suspend it. Um, you know, you can see what the price of gas is. It's now twice as much as uh, it was just two years ago. And that's really uh, hurting uh, Cumberland County and Perry County and Dolphin County families because they have to fill up every week. And so it's changing their habits too. So uh, I think we should spend the gas tax and I think we have money for infrastructure. We have about $8 billion sitting around and uh, Jim, Jim has brought up infrastructure. It's a, a very important issue and it's a great investment that I think all of us on either side of the aisle can agree that that's what you should, we should be doing with uh, the money we have is putting it into roads and highways and bridges. Same question. Yes, I believe that gas tax is high, but we need it at this high to be able to come up with the amount of money we're going to need to take care of the 750 bridges and all the roads that need to be widened. We're so far behind on widening roads, it's, it's really terrible. But because a lot of things have been kicked down the road that money was used, it should have been going to roads for other things. Though in the past, when we've got to stop that and go ahead and really prove to people that the gas tax is being used to help do roads and bridges. I am very much concerned that we're so far behind because like Honolulu has five lanes each way and the same way even in San Juan they have a 
going out to the suburbs, they have three. We'll get back to you in just a second here for another 30 seconds. But yeah, yeah um, I, I've served on the transportation committee in the house, so um, I've been involved in this. We did um, add a couple lanes to 81 uh, near East Pensboro in Cumberland County. We widened a bridge in, on Erford Road, which has turned out to be great, helped spur economic growth. But you mentioned the state police, too. I mean, we have to fund the state police, um, and, and we should be spending more money on the state police. They need more complement. They need more troopers, and uh, I, I'm just grateful for our state police, and we'll do everything I can to help them. An additional 30 seconds to continue. Yeah. I'll just finish at San Juan, poor Puerto Rico. They have two lanes each way going into the city and two lanes in the middle. They change the corner to Russia. We need much more around Pennsylvania. State police, about half the county is depend on state police for most of their policing. And I've taught those people, they're dealing with a lot of situations. Greg mentioned about the fentanyl and all that. They're out really dealing with a lot of situations. Thank you very much. And our third issue today is the midterm elections and what changes, if any, need to be made to ensure fair and secure elections in Pennsylvania. Mr. Massey won the coin flip. Please begin. Well, we've upgraded voting machines in the last couple of years that seem to be working very well. I think we have people watching what's going on. You can have poll watchers. You can have other people there to make sure. We've also had security there. As far as I've seen over the years, I haven't really seen any issues come up about problems with actual voting, that there is plenty of secure methods to take care of it. And I think we will see uh, that most of the things that were brought up in the past really have no validity at all. And after these two years, they still can't prove it. Thank you. Same question. Yeah, I, um, I supported um, bills to make it easier to vote um, and to, to expand opportunities to vote, but also to make it harder to cheat. And uh, I spent 30 years in real estate in the private sector, so a lot of what I come from is common sense. And you can't go into a grocery store in central Pennsylvania and buy a six pack of beer without showing your ID. I have an eight year old daughter who's in second grade. When she goes to the library, they wanna see her ID. I don't think there's any reason why people can't show ID when they vote. And um, I think that would help as well. Um, but we need to make sure that voters have confidence in the elections and um, I wanna see as many of them vote as possible. 30 seconds to you. Well, I think IDs are not a big issue but we have to make it easy for people who don't drive to get an ID very close. A lot of people don't have transportation to get to places, so that makes it tough to go get an ID. But I've seen in the time that I helped in the past on a poll and worked at the poll that I never saw issues with people trying to cheat, and I just think that that's the way that we have to look at it, that there is enough secure methods. And the final 30 seconds. Yeah, it's, um, we also need pre-canvassing. We need uh, the results the day of the election. Um, we've had issues where counties will wait till after the, even a couple days after the Tuesday election, Cumberland County waited till Friday to start counting the mail-in ballots. And we're gonna have about a third of the people voting by mail. Um, so I think it's like going to, I said, like going to a Penn State football game. You wouldn't watch the whole four quarters and leave and drive home and then be told three days later. Unless it was 1982 and 83 when Penn State beat Georgia. You, know, they, you want to know the results the night of the election. And I think they should keep counting until we have a results. Thank you both so much for being here and for answering these questions about these important issues. And these debates will continue throughout the election season.